I would like to share a couple of observations uh, that we have been taking in the market at the moment. And the starting point is that more than 75% of the uh, companies plan actually to accelerate their digital transformation. So on the left hand side, you see that 50% uh, of the clients already prioritized the topic of digital investments prior to the COVID crisis followed by research and development uh, and marketing investments. And now, uh, during and after the COVID crisis, um, this uh, uh, basically share has gone up to 77%. So 77% across all industries of the companies plan to uh, further accelerate their digital transformation. And uh, you see different results for different industries. So in the technology space, for example, with media, we are at 82%. Um, and then there are other industries which have a lower share. Moving to the next slide. So when we now look basically at the overall uh, share that IT cost is generating in different industries, we see that IT cost uh, basically takes a significant part of the overall operational expenses. So in financial institutions, it's between 15 and 25% of the OPEX spend. Um, that is consumed by IT cost. Um, in the smaller companies, it's 10 to 20%, public sector, 6 to 14%. And even in the chemical industry or in uh, the energy space, you still have IT cost consuming 1 to 2% of the overall operational expenses. So IT cost is a significant part of the total spend. And this is why it is worthwhile to look into opportunities to reduce IT costs, either to save the money or to free up budget to accelerate digital investments and uh, the digital transformation. Moving to the next slide. So if you know basically how important is IT and tech efficiency at the moment, we see that there are, yeah, couple of observations that we can make. So first, we see there is a massively changing environment. And uh, we see this when, for example, we talk with IT providers. Uh, many IT providers complain um, that many of their clients try to renegotiate the current uh, contracts. They request discounts from 20 to 50% with 30% on average. The number of phishing emails has gone up dramatically. So cybersecurity is becoming a key topic and um, I've been conducting various projects in that space. And I must say that uh, the awareness of what are the, the assets, the, the data assets to be protected is not very large. And also the level of securing those assets can be further increased. And with more people working remotely, um, cybersecurity is moving into the center of attention, um, not only for the CRO, but also for the CEO and also COOs. Other clients basically tell us that um, they consider now to do more outsourcing. Um, many are stuck with a high level of fixed cost and in order to uh, basically um, make a fixed cost variable cost, they consider to outsource uh, uh, certain activities and accelerate um, the overall transfer of tasks to external vendors. Another priority of the hour is uh, basically driven by cost pressure. So um, we hear from many clients that uh, reduction of car packs going down to the bare essentials is, is a key priority. Many companies have started to conduct a zero-based budgeting project to really look what they can save. Um, budgets are something we won't get. So not having the budget anymore is a key topic. And the question is then if the budget is not there anymore, um, where can cost be saved to do the mandatory uh, investments? And um, we also see that there is a massive questioning of the existing investment portfolio that's on the right hand side. Um, so what are the projects that really generate value and what are the ones which um, were supposed to create value but have yet not delivered uh, as planned and therefore should be stopped. So we see various clients that massively uh, cut the project spend and focus uh, in the project portfolio only on the projects that generate value uh, in short term to help also to improve the overall balance sheet and the profit and loss statement. 53% of all the CFOs are considering to defer or cancel planned IT investments. That's based on our latest research. 
The question is now, what can you do about it? Moving to the next slide. So the key thing is here that based on our experience, and we've seen that at many clients, five to 15% cost reduction in IT is possible within 12 months. And this is based on many projects or many experiences that we have seen at our clients. And it's basically um, yeah, the accumulation of many projects um, and uh, the expected savings that can be achieved within 12 months. Two to 6% are coming from application and infrastructure simplification. It, this is about decommissioning of applications, but it's also um, demand optimization in the space of infrastructure and applications, um, where, for example, licenses are returned, um, where uh, infrastructure demand is being reduced, storage, for example, but also um, the number of servers is consolidated, for example, by increasing the average utilization of server capacity, et cetera. The next uh, topic is, is around um, the operating model and how business and technology work together. Here also, based on our experience, two to 6% savings can be achieved. This is about acceleration of agile at scale. Agile at scale is not just a buzzword, but if it's applied in a consistent, effective way, and is really changing the way how business and technology collaborate, you see that massive savings can be achieved here, especially by taking out the number of middle managers, increasing span of control, and basically uh, increasing the proximity between business and the technology department. Portfolio reset I covered before, looking at the project portfolio, cutting low value creating projects. Then another lever is to optimize technology processes end to end, really thinking about automation of certain tech processes when it comes to testing, um, but also simplifying how, for example, small tasks uh, small tasks can be started. Uh, another category is to optimize the overall technology organization. Um, so on average, we see that the span of control is around four to five. So the number of direct reports to a manager. Um, Based on the client experience, the ambition should be above eight. So this is usually also an area um, that can deliver fast impact. What is also a key lever is to reduce the indirect activities in the IT department. So um, we have seen in many organizations that the indirect share, so tasks that are not related to application development, application support, infrastructure operations or business analysis, but related to project portfolio optimization, IT controlling, uh, strategy work, meeting preparation, that these indirect activities add up to um, about 40 to 60% of the total capacity in IT. And it's not sufficient to just look at the org chart, but it's really necessary to look what the people are doing and then uh, shift the work from indirect to direct. Several uh, CROs have conducted such types of programs and have um, for example, achieved a shift of 15% of the workforce from indirect to direct. And then, of course, ride-shoring is also the topic of the hour. Um, so what tasks must be done onshore with a high proximity to the business, but what can also be done offshore or nearshore to also benefit from lower salary uh, uh, levels. Then um, two more levers that I would like to emphasize. One is the sourcing ecosystem. This is about renegotiation of the vendor contracts, challenging of SLA levels. This is also a very, very important short-term lever. Um, renegotiation, I mentioned also before, um, we have also been part of this type of work. Usually you get credit notes when you negotiate with the vendors. Um, at least uh, they are also expected if they are long-term partners of yours to contribute uh, and help uh, you through the COVID-19 crisis. And then workforce leadership and culture. Um, clearly, um, I mean, with the remote ways of working becoming more important, people working from home, you can stop unnecessary travel. Um, you can stop uh, traveling for internal meetings. Um, you can also help to uh, increase workforce productivity through artificial intelligence, improve uh, the steering of uh, uh, certain processes, uh, creating more transparency in the IT department, how the capacity is being utilized, etc. And then a very important topic, especially also in COVID times, is of course the upskilling of the workforce. 
it is really, really now also the time to um, see what, what capabilities does your workforce have and how can the workforce be upskilled via online training, via maybe uh, online certifications, etc. cetera. Um, especially if you know, there are not so busy times, that's a, a very uh, valuable and powerful opportunity to upskill the workforce to then also uh, in the near future replace externals and re-insource critical activities. <laughs>